So it's corresponding to figure 5 from the Frog Skeletal Muscle Lab report. And what we have here is that it's asking to generate a figure with showing only the muscle contraction at a frequency of 5 Hz using double arrow or a bracket. Label the force of contraction due to summation and the force of contraction. So two separate labels are asking for there. So what is it that they're after? Well, what we're thinking about here is that we want you to be able to um, go into and open up the iWorks program that's associated, or you know, open up the data first. So let's do that part. I'm going to go ahead and go to that. This is one that I, um, I had previously. I'm going to close because that doesn't correspond to this. And instead, I'm going to ask it to open up the new file um, that corresponds to summation to tetanus, because that is the data that they're after. So we'll go to summation to tetanus, open it up, and we have this raw data file. Yours might look a little bit different, it just depends on how you actually have it. But what it should do is that when you go to double display time and zoom out, you should be able to see the entire data trace here, and it should look something like this. And here, they've annotated down the uh, frequencies that they put in. So 1 hertz, 2 hertz corresponds to this guy, 3 hertz corresponds here, 4 hertz, 5 hertz, etc. You can see as, as they've stimulated more frequently that they've also been able to have more muscle contraction happening faster and faster. And so, um, in the video that talks about figure 6, we'll talk about some of those details that, um, that's related to it, and some of the important measurements that you can make for generating figure six. But for figure five, what we just want to do is be able to isolate and talk uh, and set up the, um, the picture for figure five. So I'm just going to do that by placing the two cursors on either side of figure five here. And then you can choose for it to go in between two cursors. So you can zoom between two cursors, and there it is. Um, I like to auto scale the bottom one, and um, you can also auto scale the top one so you can see things a little bit more clearly. And then um, you can click and drag onto this to make it move a little bit. Um, but there is a little bit of trouble that we have doing, and I'm going to talk about that uh, in just a second because sometimes you guys might run into it and it's really frustrating when it happens. But first, let's complete this you know, idea here. So. What we're going to do then is that we're going to basically want, uh, we want to be able to show um, you know, what 5 hertz looks like. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to place the cursors in the positions in which we actually normally would measure the 5 hertz stimulation here. And so I talk about this more in the video that describes figure 6, but I'll briefly say that we have to have the cursor placed where it reaches a baseline right here for the muscle contraction force. And then what we have over here is that the, um, this cursor needs to be at the trough, usually at the last trough that's been created by the contracting muscle. And the principle here is that you've had a muscle twitch that's uh, gone through contraction, or that's going through relaxation. Before it can complete its relaxation phase, it contracts again and again and again. And that process repeats itself. And so what you're having is a summation, a force of summation that's occurring. And so the force is getting stronger and stronger. The summation force is getting stronger and stronger. And then it kind of levels out. Well, depending on which frequency you run at, sometimes it doesn't level out until it gets close to the ends. So for a convenient measurement, you should place it at the last trough prior to the completion of contraction. So right there. Do not place your cursor here or at the top. Because, as you can see, the summation force is going to be um, the same. Or if you measure summation force in that way, it would be the same here as it would be all the way out there. And that's not true. We're looking at the force that's happening right there. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so, um, that's what we're looking at. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and position the cursors in the way that I'm actually going to measure it. In the following video that talks about how to set up figure four and figure six, um, you'll be able to see the, uh, um, how this is all done more detail. But for now, we just want to position the cursor so we can actually take a picture of it and use it. I'm going to copy, and then I'm going to paste it into our Word document um, here. And I'll just move it down a little bit. So that was just one of the ones that I was annotating before. Um, and now here's the other one. 
And the thing that they're gonna they ask for in this uh, in this thing is that they ask for the um, use a double arrow or a bracket to label the force of contraction to dissemination and the force of contraction. Um, so two separate labels that they're asking for here. So the um, the force of contraction due to summation and the force of contraction. So let me just get back to that window. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create and insert a shape like a bracket, for example. Let's go here, or let's see, I think it's in the basic shapes over there. I'll choose this little bracket there, that's fine. The force of contraction due to summation, I'm just going to illustrate like this. So I'm going from roughly where baseline is, right here. And if you remember, uh, I was talking about in figure three that they, you have this issue where this tends to cover it up. Let's go under format, and then go under where it says wrap text, and then just say you want it in front of the text, and you'll be back where you want it to be. So this illustrates the force due to contraction. Um, I'm sorry, force due to summation, because it's going from that point right there downwards. Now your total contraction force is actually different. Your total contraction force is, is from the baseline all the way up to the very tippy top there. Um, this point right here is what I'm trying to get at. And so what I might do is I might just show that by moving in a little bit and trying to get things to line up. And as another helpful measure, I can add, um, and I can add in a shape of just a line that might show where our baseline is. So I'm just going to kind of draw it across here so that it's really clear that that's what we're uh, comparing it to. Um, and so then you can add your text box to explain what this is, that this is a force due to contraction, and this is a force due to summation. So the full contraction force is here, but the summation um, first due summation is right there. Okay. So that's how you can annotate and add that information. I hope that helps for figure five.